Well, we're uh, we're we're here again for a Florida Gators commitment, which is another big one. The Florida Gators are just continuing to uh, to run rampant in recruiting lately, and 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 you love to see it. It's a fantastic thing to go because Eugene Wilson the third, the four star wide receiver slash athlete. Um, wait till he still hasn't chose yet. It, yeah. Uh, so Deshaun D. Murray, uh, I, you saying he's supposed to be, at, he was supposed to come in at 12. He's apparently in Alaska right now. So 12 noon Eastern was 4 PM Eastern. Uh, well, for 12, his time was 4 PM Eastern, but, uh, he didn't specify when he initially said it, but who cares? Eugene Wilson, the third, the four star athlete who's going to play wide receiver for the Florida Gators out of Tampa, Florida has committed to the Florida Gators. He's officially made the announcement. He tweeted the Go Gators with the logo, and it's dope. And he is now the highest ranked commit for this Florida Gators class, which is, I mean, I mean, it cannot be understated at this point. It is a massive add for the Florida Gators. They add yet another Florida kid. So they've added 12 commits or on 24-7, 10 of them being from Florida, two of them being from Georgia, of course, in uh, TJ Searcy and Aaron Gates. But hey, F- Florida's doing their thing here, and and it's incredible to see just how Florida has been moving over the past week or so, because Eugene Wilson the third, of course, four-star wide receiver, athlete, top 150 player. His final two were Florida, and Texas A&M, and he picked Florida. And the expectation was always to be Florida. Sorry, let me take the shades off. I forgot about it. Uh, I forgot about it. I, for, I, I forgot that we were doing the Billy Napier thing, and then I put the shades on, and then I forgot to take them off completely. Um, but Eugene Wilson the third has committed. Uh, Florida was the expectation the whole time. Pretty much ever since he announced that he would be committing, it was – He's going to be a Gator. That, that was the expectation. It was a, pretty much a slam dunk here. And I had John Garcia on the show yesterday, who is Sports Illustrated's director of football recruiting, and he's locked on to recruiting insider. Uh, he was on the show yesterday talking about him, and he I mean, pretty much, by all accounts, what you will hear when you talk about Eugene Wilson III or when you read about Eugene Wilson III is – he is fast. Yes, hard right to self-destruction. He did commit to the Florida Gators. Eugene Wilson the third is now the highest ranked commit for the Florida Gators in the 2023 class now. Top 150 player. Fantastic ad for Billy Napier and Co. And like I was saying, he's he's very fast. He's so fast. He makes fast people look not fast. That's how fast Eugene Wilson the third is. And he is again. It, it, it's a fantastic ad, too, because when you look at the rest of this receiver room right now. There are very talented players. There are. You've got Justin Shorter. You've got uh, Xavier Whitmore. I mean, Xavier Henderson, Trent Whitmore, Ricky Pearsall, Marcus Burke, Jaquavion Frazier's. Uh, yes, hardwired for self-destruction. Yeah, a, a little bit of, uh, of miscommunication going on here. But you've got a lot of receivers, and there's not a ton of proven vertical threats or speed demons, whatever you want to call them, or proven dynamic playmakers. But Eugene Wilson the third is exactly that. So the Florida Gators have added some much needed depth and talent to this receiver room for the future. And it, it's going to be a very crowded room next year, by the way, but also a very fast room next year. And it's something to definitely keep an eye out. And I mean, Eugene Wilson the third, he adds his name to the Four stars, uh, the four star commits for the Florida Gators because in just the past week, Florida's added TJ Searcy, the four star defensive lineman from Upson Lee in Thomaston, Georgia. He he was at the time of his commitment, he was the highest ranked commit for the Florida Gators. Trayon Webb out of Trinity Christian Academy and Jacksonville, he committed yesterday, as did Marcus Stokes, the four star quarterback from nice high school and he was committed to penn state and of course he flipped now and here's the thing florida ain't done in july i'll let you know that now they might not be done today because don't forget peter woods is committing tonight and florida is in his final four along with jackson state clemson and alabama florida is not the favorite they are not expected to get peter woods but 
never say never despite me saying it twice but you know do as i say not as i do that's how we do it um so florida's been adding and and it's also just important that they've been that offensive class is finally reaching the talent of that defensive class uh florida's rank in recruiting is uh 19 right now i believe with the updated ranking on 24 7 i I think they're going to be uh 19 20 ish so it's going to be a big ad there in florida just Climbing up, just climbing up. I uh, hope Cousin Eddie's here. I doubt he is, but hope Cousin Eddie's here because he likes to talk that talk. He was talking that talk yesterday, and he was just like, or today, actually. And he's like, hey, I'm surprised we even got that high. Well, guess what? We're still going up, baby. We're going to keep going up, too. The Florida Gators are not done. Billy Napier is not done. The rest of this coaching staff is not done. And Eugene Wilson the third is the guy. And, yeah, I, I think we all agree. Peter Woods is likely going to Alabama. I have no problem with that. Um, It's not the best situation, but I am not one to be greedy. We got TJ Searcy on the defensive line. We got Isaiah Nixon on the defensive line. We got Gavin Hill on the defensive line. We've added talent. We're going to add more in Gainesville. That's just how things go. But the Florida Gators have finally, like I was saying, uh, their offensive ranking has finally caught up to their defensive rankings. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But first, quickly... Just, I mean, if you think the Florida Gators will win seven games or six games this year, you can check out Bet Online. The Gators' win total is right now set at six and a half. I'm taking the over. I'm letting you know that right now. I'm taking the over. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your betting needs and sports information. I've been using Bet Online for five or six years now, and I couldn't be happier with it. It's got so much, not just basketball, football, baseball, soccer, hockey tennis table tennis darts you got not even just sports you got reality tv award shows maybe next year you'll be able to bet on if someone will get slapped at an award show who knows and so much more head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action check out bet online it's where the game starts now we're talking about this recruiting class like i just mentioned the offensive recruiting is finally catching up to the defensive recruiting because I don't remember when I was talking to John Garcia if it was on air or off air, but we were talking about Florida's defensive recruiting has been phenomenal this entire time. You look at TJ Searcy, defensive line, four-star, committed. Isaiah Nixon, four-star, flipped from UCF to the Florida Gators, edge rusher. Sharif Denson, four-star corner from Jacksonville, Florida Gators. Gavin Hill, four-star D-line from Gainesville, Florida Gators. Aaron Gates, He's listed as an athlete, but he's going to be playing corner for the Florida Gators. He is committed to the Florida Gators. He was committed before, too, but keeping him is also important. Then looking at, um, I mean, that that's, that's the defensive line class. And then looking at the offensive class, it's finally catching up. Because just a couple of weeks ago, the offensive class for the Gators were Nigel Harris, Creed Whitmore, Bryce Lovett, and Tyree Patterson. That was it. Just those four kids. Those are the only commits for the Florida Gators on the offensive side of the ball. And it was all, you know, it, it was fine, but it was a low four-star and then three three-stars. And while those are fine players and they will likely contribute to this Gators team at some point, those aren't the the headlining names that you want. And then Florida, of course, went through the situations with Arch Manning said he was going to visit Florida and then he committed to Texas before taking that visit. Jaden Rashada visited Florida twice and then he committed to Miami, and then the whole NIL debacle <laughs> happened with Jaden Rashada. And then it kind of came down to can this offensive, can this coaching staff get it done offensive recruiting wise? Because we know they can get offensive linemen just with who's on staff. If you didn't yesterday, we talked about this during yesterday's episode live stream. Uh, we we talked about how the offensive line is not going to be an issue recruiting wise, or at least it shouldn't be, because you got Rob Sale, Darnell Simpleton. You've got Billy Napier. You've got so many guys that can kind of push for the offensive line recruiting, and that's going to be easy and they're proven. Kerry Colbert, same thing at receiver, which Eugene Wilson the third is just another example of that. And Billy Napier has clearly put a massive emphasis on receiver for the 2023 class. But the offensive line, the offensive recruiting before just wasn't stellar. And then, I mean, even in the past, right now it's 424 p.m. And so even in the past, what, 24, 24 and a half hours, you've added a four-star quarterback. You've added a four-star quarterback in Marcus Stokes. 
You've added a four-star running back in Trayon Webb, and you've added a four-star receiver in Eugene Wilson the third. So from what quickly what went from a great defensive class and a poor offensive class quickly became such a balanced, balanced class. And it's it's incredible to see now with the Gators. Yep, officially on 24-7. They are now the 19th ranked recruiting class. Eugene Wilson, 147th overall player, the first top 150 commit for Billy Napier for the 2023 class is Eugene Wilson the third. Uh, TJ Searcy, number 153, Trayon Webb, 162. And then you go down to Marcus Stokes, and he's 397 nationally, 22nd quarterback in the nation. He was the Elite 11. He, he had a great performance at the Elite 11. And it's kind of like, okay, well, Florida's Florida's kind of doing something now where this past week alone, in the past five days, have added four four-star recruits and four four-star commits. And it's just, it's an insane thing to see just because Florida doesn't usually do this. But now pretty much every position on the offensive side of the ball has someone except tight end. You look at quarterback, you've got four-star Marcus Stokes. You look at running back, you've got four-star Trayon Webb. You look at receiver, you've got four-star Eugene Wilson the third. You've got three-star Creed Whitmore and three-star Tyree Patterson. And you look at offensive line and you've got four-star Nigel Harris and four-star and uh, three-star Bryce Lovett. So this offensive recruiting class has pretty much a guy that, that can play long-term at every position but tight end. They've got at least one four-star at every position but tight end. Tight end is also a position where I've been told don't expect Florida to make too many moves at tight end, that the 2023 tight end class is not really something that they're uh, paying a ton of attention to, which also that, that shouldn't be surprising at all because, I mean, if you look at the current Gators roster, it, it's kind of uh, kind of already stacked up a little bit where do we really need to add a tight end in the 2023 class? Of course, it's great to add players at every position in every class, but realistically, you can't really do that. Like that That's not how things work when it comes down to it. So it's not something that you should really uh, stress about adding a tight end. We get it. Billy Napier loves to have multiple tight ends on the field at the same time. But, I mean, in 2022 class alone, you've got Arliss Boardingham. You've got Hayden Hansen. You've got Scott Isaacs is here now. You've got these young tight ends on roster. You've got Tony Livingston is going to play tight end for the Gators. And then you've got Nick Elksness from last year. He's a redshirt freshman this year. You've got Noah Keeter flipped from uh, linebacker to tight end. Dante Zanders flipped from edge rusher to tight end. Jonathan Odom is healthy again. Griffin McDowell is back. Keon Zipper is there. You've got a lot of tight ends that are going to be here in 2023 and 2024. So maybe 2023 doesn't have to be a priority because you also have to worry about the number of scholarships available, and Florida's clearly making wide receiver a massive, massive focal point for this 2023 recruiting class, which isn't surprising. Uh, that, that's kind of how things should go, I think, but it, it's just fantastic right now, and things are trending up for a team where, you know, j just, a, just yesterday morning, we were saying Florida's really struggling, re really gaining traction on the recruiting trail right now, and then they answered the biggest question, which, which was, could they get a quarterback? And they did just that with Marcus Stokes. And it kind of, once Marcus Stokes flipped from Penn State to Florida, you kind of knew that things were going to change for the Gators, that, that things were changing and things were, things were turning around for the better. And here's the thing also, things weren't bad in Gainesville. They, they weren't bad recruiting-wise in Gainesville. There were questions and there were worries, but... Things weren't bad in any way, shape, or form. It was just, can they get that quarterback, and can they get their answer? And, and they did that. So now that they answered that biggest question, recruiting gets a lot easier. Because you look at, I mean, Eugene Wilson III, like I said, we kind of knew he was coming to Gainesville. Trayon Webb said that he knew for weeks that he was coming to Gainesville. But there were other, there are, are other players that, without a quarterback, they would have been like, I don't want to go there. There, there are other receivers that, will commit and other offensive linemen that will commit where it's, if we don't have a quarterback, they're not coming to Gainesville. But now that that question has been answered, it makes recruiting so much easier. And especially now that Billy Napier 
has answered the most difficult question that he will face in this 2023 class is could you get that quarterback Marcus Stokes I mean he grew up a Florida fan and, and here's the thing also the 12 commits that we have now we're not going to have all of them when it comes time to February almost definitely won't have all of them when it comes time for February signing day because people will decommit and that's fine because Florida is going to add commits also so people will decommit and that that's fine but I think when you look at Marcus Stokes, he's here to stay. And that's, that's an important part where he's from Florida. He's a Florida fan. He's a niece kid. And it was between Florida and Penn state. He, he committed to Penn state and then he flipped and Penn state fans haven't handled it with the most class. So I think Marcus Stokes is here to stay, which is going to help solidify this 2023 recruiting class where there will be names that drop out. There will be names that come in, but now the quarterback is answered and you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief if you're a Florida Gator fan or if you're on this Florida Gators coaching staff because that is that that's solved. Now you've added Eugene Wilson the third and is a top 150 player. He's the number 10 athlete in the country according to 24/7. He's the he's the highest ranked player. He's a four star. He's a speed demon, and most importantly for us, he's a Florida. Gator. So we, we've got a lot to talk about with this recruiting class. We're going to have John Garcia from Sports Illustrated on next week as well to break this down and talk about this and talk about what's next and how Florida can improve. And we're going to hope that tonight Peter Woods commits to the Florida Gators. He's committing in about three hours. Uh, Garrett, yeah, um, Clemson or Bama are, are the two where it's like Peter Woods is probably going there. Um, we'll see. I, I, who knows at this point? Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen. We're available daily, every day. Uh, sorry, here's someone said AR-15 seems pretty raw, a good NIL, and two more years of playing for Napier is not out of the question. I will say this, Roland, and people that I've spoken to, I will say this before leaving, um, and people that I've spoken to share the sentiment, I don't think Anthony Richardson is going to be in the 2023 NFL draft um, because people say, He's going to be amazing Heisman caliber, and people say he's going to be bad. Here's the thing. It's a bell curve, essentially. He's going to probably be somewhere in the middle there, and I don't know if that sends him to the draft, and I don't think he's going to have a uh, – I don't think that the Florida Gators will have enough wins for him to be the Heisman winner. So I, I don't think that he's going to be a Heisman winner and leave. Uh, so I, I think that we get – uh, Anthony Richardson for 2022 and most likely 2023, which I won't complain about. And I doubt most of us will complain about. So it's going to be interesting, but I mean, who cares at this point? Honestly, Marcus Stokes, I highly doubt was told you're going to be our starting quarterback in 2023. And yeah, Matt, I'm also hoping that this levels out the fan base, take deep breaths. Things are not settled, but you should be happy about how things are going for the Florida Gators, especially with a transitional coach, from the group of five, think things are going well in Gainesville. I'm Brandon Olson for Locked On Gators. Follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole Nine Sports and Giants Country of SI.com. And who knows? Maybe we'll be back for another big commit. Won't be back for Peter Woods tonight, but maybe we'll be back for another big commit at some point this weekend. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to like, subscribe, follow, and have a great evening.